Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna and today I will be teaching you the topic of brachial plexus. So what is brachial plexus? Brachial plexus meaning a bundle of nerves that supplies the brachial region, the arm of the body. Let's talk first about the spinal cord. So this is the spinal cord. When it arises from the cervical vertebra, these are the cervical spinal nerves and then the thoracic cage part of the spinal cord gives off the thoracic spinal nerves t1 t2 t3 t4 all the way and then the lumbar part gives off the lumbar spinal nerves and then the sacral spinal nerve the brachial plexus is basically formed by the spinal nerves the c5 c6 c7 c8 and since c8 is a last cervical nerve t1 so the anterior primary rami of the c5 to T1 spinal nerves form the brachial plexus that supplies the arm with nerves. A quick idea of what the anterior primary rami are. This is a cross section of the spinal cord. The ventral root or the anterior root of the spinal cord carries motor fibers while the posterior root or the dorsal root carry the sensory fibers. All of these fibers mix along with some sympathetic fibers from the ganglions. All of these mix up and they form a anterior ramus and a dorsal ramus. So right now we are talking about the ramus plural is rami. So we are talking about anterior or ventral rami of the C5 to T1 spinal nerves. So let's begin the brachial plexus. The first part of the brachial plexus is known as the roots. So the roots are C5, C6, C7, C8, T1. These are the roots. Make a line. These represent the roots. The second part of brachial plexus are the trunks. The trunks basically form by combining nerves. So C5 and C6 combine and form the upper trunk. Upper trunk. The C8 and T1 become best friends and form the lower trunk. C7 is riding solo, has no friends. It becomes the middle trunk. So we have roots and trunks. This is also known as, both of them together are known as the supraclavicular part of the brachial plexus. Moving on, the third part of the brachial plexus are the divisions. The divisions are simple. Each trunk forms a ventral or anterior division and a dorsal division. An anterior division and a dorsal division, an anterior division and a dorsal division. Divisions alone are known as the retroclavicular part of the brachial plexus. The ventral division of the upper trunk and the middle trunk become best friends, form a partnership. This is the V, the ventral divisions of the upper and middle trunk form the, the fourth part of the brachial plexus, the cords. So the ventral division of upper trunk and the ventral division of middle trunk form the lateral cord because this is away from the sternum or the median plane. Lateral cord, suppose the sternum is here. The ventral division of the lower trunk, it, it goes alone to form the medial cord. And finally, the dorsal divisions of all of the trunks make a partnership to form the what because they're all dorsals they form the posterior cord after the cords come the branches we will talk about the branches before that let me tell you that cords and branches are the infraclavicular part of the brachial plexus and if you remember we talked about this in the contents of axilla that the infraclavicular part of the brachial plexus is lying in the axilla so let's draw this in a more neat way and discuss the branches as you watch this video, take a paper and a pencil and draw it yourself. The roots, then the trunks, then the divisions and finally the cords. So guys, let's talk about the branches of the brachial plexus. We all know that these are the roots, these are the trunks, these are the divisions and these are the cords. So firstly, branches come from the roots. Let's talk about the branches of the roots first. So the most important branch of the root is C5, C6, C7 roots, they combine to form this nerve and it is known as the long thoracic nerve. This is the sole nerve supply of the serratus anterior muscle. So what is the root value of this nerve? Seeing that it comes from C5, 6, 7, so it's a C5, 
6 and 7 root values. So it's very important uh, in exam point of view that you should know the root values of each nerve. So this is the first branch. So the first branch is long thoracic nerve. Long thoracic nerve. The second branch approaches from the root. Yet again, it is known as the dorsal scapular nerve. This is the nerve supply to the rhomboid. If you remember in the scapula, we studied the rhomboid muscles attached to the medial border of the scapula. So its root value would be what? C5. Pretty simple. Moving on, uh, there are a couple of more branches of the root, but the, however, these are more important. And from the trunks, only the upper trunk is responsible for giving branches. Other trunks do not give branches. So this gives one, the nerve to subclavius that lies just below the clavicle, as we studied earlier, nerve to subclavius and the suprascapular nerve. This supplies the supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscles. So it's very important that you know the various branches of brachial plexus and you know their area of supply. Moving on, we've talked about the root branches, the trunk branches. Now we have the more important, the cord branches. Let's talk about the lateral cord first. The lateral cord is giving the most important, known as the musculocutaneous nerve. This is very important as it has a lot of supplies in the arm and forearm. And it also gives another nerve as according to its name, lateral pectoral nerve. It supplies both the pectoral muscles, namely the major and minor. It gives another lateral called the lateral root of median nerve. So it's not the median nerve. It's giving the root for the median nerve that will be formed in the future. So here it goes so that it can bind with the medial root, which we'll talk about. So overall lateral cord gives three branches. Moving on, let's talk about the medial cord. The medial cord also gives Remember from the name medial, it gives the first median root of the median nerve. And finally, these two roots combine to form the median nerve. So this is the median nerve. So the medial cord also gives two more medial branches. One known as, simply remember, the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm and the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm. It also gives the medial pectoral nerve that supplies both the pectoral muscles yet again. And what happens is, so the lateral root of median nerve gives fibers to the medial cord to connect with it. The medial cord now becomes the ulnar nerve. So the root values of each of these nerves you should know. It's very important. But for now, explaining purposes, I am only going to state their names. Overall, the medial cord gives five branches. These are the medial pectoral, medial cutaneous nerve of forearm and arm, the median root of median nerve. And when the lateral root of median nerve gives fiber to the medial cord, the medial cord becomes the ulnar nerve. Now let's talk about the posterior cord. The posterior cord, it gives an upper subscapular nerve. This supplies the subscapularis muscle, upper subscapular nerve, and the lower subscapular nerve. This supplies the subscapularis plus teres major. And then we have the nerve to latissimus dorsi or the thoracodorsal nerve. This gives nerve supply to the name says it, latissimus dorsi. And then it gives axillary nerve. This is the nerve supply of our main muscle, the deltoid muscle. Along with the deltoid, since teres major has been supplied, it also supplies the teres minor with the deltoid. And finally, the posterior cord, after giving these branches, becomes the thickest branch of the entire brachial plexus, which carries the root value of the entire brachial plexus, C5 to T1. This is known as the radial nerve. It gives supply to the three head of triceps and it gives supply to the uh, muscles of the forearm and cutaneous sensations to the hand. So brief overview of the brachial plexus, we have talked about the various parts of the brachial plexus and then we have talked about the various branches. Firstly, from the roots, there was the branch that supplies the serratus anterior called the nerve to serratus anterior, long thoracic nerve, the dorsal scapular nerve. We've talked about the nerve from the upper trunk, we have the nerve to subclavius and the suprascapular nerve. And then we've talked about three branches of lateral cord, namely the lateral pectoral, musculocutaneous and lateral root of median nerve. And then we had the medial cord, which had the median root of median nerve, the medial cutaneous nerve of arm and forearm with the medial pectoral nerve and finally becoming the ulnar nerve after joining with the fibers of lateral root of median nerve. The posterior cord had the five branches yet again. It has the upper subscapular, lower subscapular, the thoracodorsal and the axillary nerve. And finally, it becomes the radial nerve, which is the thickest branch of the brachial plexus. For the exam point of view, you should know the root value of each nerve. 
Moving on, let's talk about the clinicals of brachial plexus. 